with that kid. was stranded on a desert island. He was crazy from the heat and nicotine withdrawal, and because he was genetically predisposed to insanity, which is why all 37 of the psychiatrists who had treated him had classified him as a sociopath. Even if he wasn't crazy to start with, he probably would have been by now anyway, because he hadn't seen another living human being in almost six months. He'd also been smoking a lot of different plants since he'd run out of cigarettes, and some of them made Kevin feel funny and see demons. Kevin liked those ones the best. Kevin had tried to make some new friends, but things hadn't worked out very well. Mostly because he wasn't properly schooled as a mechanical engineer. Even the ones that did sort of work out just ended up getting on his nerves like real people, leaving Kevin no choice but to smash them into annihilation. Kevin was sad and lonely. He'd wanted a friend so bad he'd even started to miss his family. Tell the boy to go get me a beer. He ain't home. Figured, asshole kid. Hey, that's my lawnmower. Kevin didn't even have his imaginary friend Alan the Magic Goose to play with. They'd gotten into a power struggle over who got to be ruler of the new land, and the goose told Kevin he could go screw himself. Kevin had tried to make up with his imaginary friend quite a few times, but the goose wasn't having it. Fuck off! Fuck off. What he said. Kevin had had it up to his ass with the smart mouthed goose. So he figured he'd storm the bird's compound at sunrise and stage a violent coup. Kevin fell asleep dreaming of what it would be like to be the supreme ruler of the island, <laughs> squelching all who defied him with an iron fist. is going on. Hey, you broke Louie. I'm gonna kick your ass, lunatic. for the last six months because you were too goddamn stupid to check the other side of the island? Kevin didn't much care for the goose giving him no lip, especially since he hadn't bothered to get off his lazy bird ass and check either. I live in your fucking head, stupid. I only go where you imagine me going. I only do what you imagine me doing. How many times do we gotta go over that, Einstein? Kevin had forgotten that Alan wasn't real and only did what he imagined. So Kevin imagined Alan pulling his own leg off and beating himself in the head with it. 
He figured that ought to learn the ignorant bastard a thing or two, but he was wrong. Because he forgot to imagine Alan learning a lesson. Put my damn leg back on and let you and me go get it some real alcohol and cigarettes. Welcome to Hugh-topia. I'm Hugh. I don't come to know your face, son, and I pride myself on my powers of recognition where townsfolk are concerned. Because the man was too big for Kevin to kill or maim in a fair fight, Kevin figured he'd lie to him about who he really was while making a mental note to put Hugh on his list of enemies to be condemned. Hmm. A self-made millionaire dwarf fleeing the stifling tax laws of your homeland? Well, okay. You keep your nose out of trouble like the others and we'll get along just fine. Now move it along. Tell him to go fuck himself, Kevin. He'll respect you for standing up to him. He'll probably make you mayor. Be smart, Kevin. Do it. Uh. Oh, and hey, rich or not, you best find yourself a job. Utopians don't go in for no welfare or unemployment. Everyone pulls their weight. You pull yours and we'll get along just fine. Kevin didn't think telling Hugh to do the F-word to himself was good thinking, so he decided to be more tactful and expressed to Hugh that he didn't think he would spend much time seeking gainful employment, since in his opinion, only assholes had jobs. Uh-oh! Look, you freaking midget. You're new, so I'm not going to banish you to the other side of the island. And believe me, you don't want to go there. It's hell on Earth. Don't believe me? <laughs> hey, Larry, what's the other side of the island like? Hell on Earth. See? Now you best heed my advice, or you'll be in for a heap of trouble and don't even think of running away. Nobody leaves Utopia. Ever. You gotta tell him to fuck off now. You ain't gotta take that broken head. Wealthy midget, what the hell kind of story is that? I know you panicked, I live in your head! Now here's what we gotta do. Since you ain't man enough to take a swing at you, we are gonna have to break the golden rule and get you a job. That's the only way we are gonna have access to a cash register so that we can steal enough money to get us some plane tickets out of here. Kevin figured he'd ask around to see if anyone was hiring. He knew it would be faster to get a newspaper and read the want ads, but since he couldn't read, he decided it was pointless. <laughs> I forgot about that! <laughs> ha 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 indeed. Hello, I'm Percy Spencer and I'd like to talk to you about illiteracy. Imagine what it must feel like not to be able to read a restaurant menu or fill out a job application. But help is available. The future is yours if you're willing to pick up the phone and ask your friends at the Literacy Hotline for help. Remember, the less time you have to spend covering up the fact you can't read, the more time you'll have for spear-fighting kangaroos in a room full of exploding mules and drunken hillbillies. hour ago, idiot. Didn't I fucking tell you, broken head? But oh no, don't listen to the bird. We'll do things Kevin's way. <laughs> Decaf caramel mochaccino, skim milk, not whole. Latte double double extra hot chocolate sprinkles. Super tall honey and jasmine decaf oriental tea with steamed cream, brown sugar, half and half with a French roast. Oh, 
you don't get paid after every shift, stupid. What is this, your first job? Look, maybe you should watch the training video again. There's nothing like the erotic aroma of fresh coffee beans. Hello, I'm a hologram of disgraced silent film comedian Fatty Arbuckle, and I'm here to talk to you about Crotch Grinders Coffee. The company was founded in 1814 by J.M. Crotch. Almost immediately, friends and family members pleaded with him to change the name, but he wouldn't have it because to J.M., the company was founded on one simple belief. Treat people well, and they'll want to have some crotch grinder going into their mouth every day. His wife left him over that one, but the company prospered. The earth has been good to crotch grinders, and J.M. wasn't the type of man not to return favors. That's why, since 1915, crotch grinders has stopped using underpaid child laborers to pick their beans, unlike some other coffee companies we won't name. Instead, J.M. came upon his second great idea. Monkeys! But not just regular jungle monkeys. J.M. wanted to help neglected zoo monkeys, circus monkeys, and monkeys kept in cages outside gas stations. These long neglected and abused animals were rescued from their life of torment and returned to their natural habitat with only a request to spend a few hours each day lending a helping hand to crotch grinders in exchange for freedom and liberation. We hold these same principles of compassion and concern for the environment today. And unlike most of our competitors who regularly employ slave labor and whose employees are frequently seen urinating into rat-infested bags of open coffee beans left to rot on filthy floors, our employees hold those same beliefs. That's why our beans are flown in fresh every week to every one of our stores. So, the next time you want to feel something hot in your mouth, I urge you to find some crotch grinder to satisfy the craving. Oh, and that thing with the dame, <laughs> that was good, consensual. Hopefully that clears... What the hell are you doing, moron? You're never going to amount to anything, kid. You're fired. <laughs> Kevin wasn't real happy about losing his job, but since he figured it was going to happen sooner or later anyway, he was glad he'd spent a good deal of the day skimming money from the till. He'd made almost $200. That was enough for one plane ticket back to the mainland. But since Kevin didn't want to go without his friend Alan, he spent the money on cough syrup, cigarettes, and a chainsaw. Kevin had just enough left over to get a room for two nights. Unfortunately, Kevin got kicked out almost right away because he'd cut the coffee table in the lobby in half with his new saw. So he spent the night in the park. Kevin hadn't had any cough syrup for months, and he'd kind of overdone it and was feeling pretty hammered. Kevin didn't know why, but he was in about as good a mood as a sociopath can be, so he decided to celebrate. Tough guy, huh? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> Kevin really wanted to take a poke at Hugh, but because his arms were strapped in, he figured he'd just concentrate really hard and will polio on him. Hey, I know that look. Quit trying to will polio on me. I don't want to have to do this, but your behavior has left me no other option but to condemn you to the penultimate death march. I hope for your sake you're as tough as you think you are. <laughs> Kevin couldn't sleep. He was scared about what the penultimate death match was, and because he couldn't undo his own zipper and had wet his pants. Even though it was against everything he believed in, Kevin figured he'd make nice with the man in the next cell and see if he knew what the death match was all about. 
Oh, deathmatch. You ain't gonna like that. No, sir, not one bit. Ain't legal, but try telling you that. <laughs> Fight to the death. Gotta be quick with the hands. Quick with the hands. No rules. Biting, kicking, hair pulling. No, sir. You ain't gonna like that. Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh. The weak do not survive. Gotta be quick with the hands. No, sir. Would not want to be in your shoes. Welcome to your last day on Earth, gentlemen. Except for whoever wins. For that man, welcome to your last day of incarceration. Get on the bus. Kevin was nervous. And the more he thought about having to fight and hurt other people to gain his freedom, the more nervous he became. Kevin wasn't used to being allowed to attack other people without getting in trouble. He wondered if this was heaven. Then he wondered what the man beside him would look like if he had soup cans for ears and his head was on fire. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the penultimate death match. The rules here are simple, gentlemen. I will pull two names out of the Strike Queen's anus. When your name is called, you will be unshackled and escorted to the ring. The winner will advance to the next round until we are left with one man. That man will be set free. Are there any questions? Kevin asked you if he could go first and if you had to stop hitting your opponent even after he was dead. We'll just sort of play that by ear. Anyway, on with the death match. Simon Fitzgibbons and Alex Molston, come on down. Simon's in for tax evasion, and Alex is doing life for killing 26 drifters. On your mark, get set. Congratulations, Alex. Let's keep it going for our next contestants. Uh, congratulations, Kevin. Alex Molston and Nelson Ogden. Nelson Ogden? Damn you and your savage barbarism to hell! Release the hippo. makes our final semi-finalist Eric Gibbons. But before we meet the four lucky semi-finalists, here's tonight's 50-50 draw for $308. And the number is one. What do you know? I won again. Congratulations, Hubert. Thanks. Now bend over. Our first semi-final will feature Alex Molston. And Eric Gibbons! Our father, what in heaven?
And now, vying for the honor of penultimate deathmatch champion, Alex Malston. And young Kevin Spencer, a real fan favorite. Kevin didn't much care for getting hit in the head, but he figured he'd put up with it for a while longer because it was all part of his master plan to win the death match and regain his freedom. Okay then, take him away. <laughs> You'll probably go your whole life and not see that again, folks. The heart of a lion. Keep it going for your champion, Kevin Spencer! I'm a man of my word, Kevin. You're free to go. My pilot here will take you wherever you want. You fought well. You should be proud. I forgot to tell you, the vet call. The monkeys are going to be fine! Hey boy, how's about getting your old man a beer? Hey, you got any smokes? Kid always was an asshole. Yeah, I'll say. Something's wrong with that kid. His head don't like it, never did. You better not cross his path. Ha, 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 ha.